Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a closer look at the new Windows 10 anniversary update which is rolling out on August 2nd for the public. This is the next major version of Windows 10, brand new update featuring lots of new features and enhancements and in this video we're just going to be walking through the most noteworthy changes upcoming in this update. So diving straight in, the first noteworthy changes are with the start menu. Now the start menu in the anniversary update has been given a couple of additional tweaks and improvements that make it easier to use. So in the anniversary update, the apps list is present straight away on the start menu. No longer is it hidden in an all apps menu separate from the actual home area of the start menu. Instead, it's just here directly available for me to scroll and open an app whenever I want to. I've got my app overview here so I can jump to a letter. So let's jump to um, S here and I can quickly launch any app beginning with S. There's also a hamburger menu here that can be customized. So as you see, clicking on the hamburger menu icon up here will bring out the hamburger menu into more detail. I've got uh, my account options here such as change account settings lock and sign out then I've also got file explorer settings and power now this is customizable if I jump into settings here and go to start you'll see that I can choose which folders appear on start and I have an option of 10 shortcuts that, that I can add to the start menu that will appear here on the left hand side of the start menu so let's add downloads and personal folder and you'll see that they now show up in the start menu as well unfortunately I can't customize what shows up there I only have the option of te these 10 shortcuts so I can't add like Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox or you know a third party app I can only add what Microsoft provides unfortunately but at least there is that level of customization that you can add so I can quickly jump to my downloads now if I really want to like that which is very nice indeed up next is the taskbar. The taskbar has received numerous changes in the anniversary update, the first of which being badges for icons that are on the taskbar or programs or apps that are open on the taskbar. So you can see down here, I've got the mail app open and you may notice next to it, I've also got a little number. This is a badge and it's kind of like a notification badge on iPhone, for example. So when you have an app tile on the app tile app icon on the iphone home screen if you have a notification from that app you'll get a little numbered badge next to it this is pretty much works exactly the same i've missed a not notification for this open app you can see on the start menu here that i also have that notification in the live tile and if i jump into the action center that notification is here also so if we jump into the app you'll see that the badge goes away and that email is up here and i can now read it and it will also be dismissed from the I like it won't be dismissed, but yeah, I can now dismiss it from the action center and it will also no longer show up on the tile here. Hopefully. At some point that should refresh, I hope. But yes, I've read that email now. So yes, it will disappear from its retrospective places. Uh, so that's how badges work, which are also very nice. And we've also got a couple of new additions to the placement of the action center button you may notice that it's now on the very far right of the taskbar and uh, it's a lot more noticeable so when a notification does roll in the notification center also has a badge which you just saw a second ago and uh, of course it's got a bigger hitbox so I can easily throw my mouse into the corner and just quickly open it without having to worry about its placement and it's no longer buried alongside all of your other system tray icons so it's very noticeable and when a notification comes in the app icon from where that notification originates will also quickly flash for a brief second to give you an indication of here's the app that's giving you a notification look at it which is also very very nice indeed now the windows store is a huge um area in which the system has been updated it has a brand new user interface that's actually pretty bearable so we get a lot of things here it, it, lots of things are mixed with the uh, the windows store now the windows store is a true universal store which spans across pc phone tablets and xbox and hololens so if we jump into a good example here is groove you'll also notice that microsoft now um positions subscriptions and things that you can buy outside of the windows store on the microsoft store so if i actually tap that it should take me oh no this one won't so i can actually buy the groove music pass directly from groove music but say if i want an office 365 subscription i can type in office and i can now shop uh, an office 365 subscription from the microsoft store which will then open edge and take me straight to the microsoft store website which is pretty cool uh, especially for those of you who are all in on the microsoft ecosystem you can now go to the windows store and if you're looking for any kind of microsoft product i wonder if surface works shall we try 
Surface. I can shop Microsoft Surface from the Windows Store, and it will take me straight to the website. So yes, any any Microsoft products you want, you can search through the Windows Store, and you'll be redirected to the location in which you can purchase uh, an app or a service or a product, which is very nice. Uh, yes, back to the actual Windows Store itself. The app has been updated dramatically. So as you can see here, the user, in, the user interface has been redesigned. You get a nice overview of what the app is available on. So in this case, PC, mobile, and the Surface Hub. But if you go to, I was looking for Groove Music, wasn't I? Yes, Groove Music, the app, you'll see that this app is available on Hol um, HoloLens and indeed Xbox One. So the Xbox One can also run uh, a specific amount of Universal Windows apps as well now, which is fantastic. You've got what's new, you've also got features, then you've got system requirements, which is a, which is a new addition to the Windows Store, I believe. So you get here, um, Groove Music works on Windows 8 or higher, apparently, which is interesting. And of course, architecture 64-bit required, even though it works on mobile and stuff. So it's not all there apparently, but it does work and it's very nice indeed. Then of course at the bottom, you've got your ratings and reviews, which are, you know, they're there and people read them sometimes. Lots of very honest reviews here today apparently. Like it, but could do with an with an EQ inside and an easy way to arrange the playlist. So there's one review that I just read to you. Um, also the download, download and updates area got redesigned, as you can see here. We now have got a recent activity menu, which gives you a list of all the apps that were recently updated, which is very useful if you're looking to see if you have an app update already installed. In which case, say if I was looking for the Skype preview update 11.6.206, I can see here that it was installed earlier today. So I no longer, I, no need, I don't need to go and check for updates because I've already got it installed. Clicking on one will in fact take you to that page in which you can either download or launch the app. Speaking of the Skype preview, Microsoft is building a brand new Skype client for the Windows 10 anniversary update. Currently in preview, as what the title says, the Skype preview app is a very early version of what Microsoft envisions Skype to be in the future. And might I say, it's pretty damn good. So I've got a conversation here uh, between me and um, I can say hello. And that will send to the person who I'm messaging, which is me. And I can respond to that conversation even with the app closed. So I can say howdy, or my friend can say howdy even though it's me. And uh, I should get a notification that pops in via the Action Center. So there you are here. I can see that my notification just popped in. And uh, it's now showing up there. And I can respond to that message via the uh, Action Center here if it lets me. And I can do pretty cool stuff. Now, the Action Center itself, whilst we're here, has been updated as well. Uh, developers now have the option of creating very rich notifications. As you can see here with the Skype preview, for example, I can reply directly from the notification and also get a nice profile icon with my beautiful face and my name, as well as the contents of the message. Other app updates include, uh, you know, the Windows Store now gives you um, a notification when uh, an app has been updated. Pretty useful for those of you who re uh, rarely check the Windows Store. Uh, then, of course, you've got feedback up there. Any app that spews out an, uh, a notification will obviously show up in the Action Center, but it's up to developers to uh, make those notifications rich. Now, a good example of how rich notifications uh, are with the reminders Cortana can present. Now, Cortana has also been updated dramatically. So Cortana can now set reminders without you actually having to provide additional information. So I can simply say to Cortana, remind me to wash the car, and she will save that as a reminder without asking for any specific details on when she wants to remind you, uh, who to remind, or blah, 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 all the other things that she would usually remind you. So let me do that now. Remind me to wash the car. Here's what I got. And there you go. She's now saved that directly to my notebook and I can add additional information. Now, how this relates to rich notifications is that I can add things like images to the uh, notification and that will actually show up in the action center as well, I believe. So if we go into this to tap to edit, you'll notice that um, I apparently can't. Oh, yes, I can. So if I go into here, I can add a picture of my car and I can also add a time. So. What time is it now? It's almost 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock, uh, 10 past two in the afternoon. So if we jump into there, 10 p.m., 10 past two, sorry, uh, today. OK, and save. Hopefully, with any luck, the notification will pop up and uh, you will see the rich notification with the huge image and all of that good stuff. Now, give us a second to complete that task because time is slow, apparently. And there you have it. You can see the notification has popped up in my notification area. And if I jump into the action center now, you should hopefully see with any luck.
A huge notification with a nice rich image and I have options here such as uh, dismiss, snooze, complete. And I can also snooze for extra time and all this good stuff. Let me delete that now. So I've washed my car, things are looking good. I've done all of my chores for the day. I can now take you back to the action sensor and detail some more improvements. So as you can see here, we've got the quick action area. The quick actions are now customizable. So if you jump into the notification and actions area in settings, you'll see here that I have this nice gridded view of my quick actions and I can simply gr tap and grab any of the actions I want and drag them around and reposition them to my liking. I can also add and remove uh, quick actions. So as you can see here, there's quite a few to choose from. I can turn them all off if I want to, if I don't want any quick actions at all, or I can turn them all on and have millions of quick actions. So I I'm kind of spoiled for choice here as to what I can have in the quick actions area listed from all settings, network connect, project, battery saver, etc, etc. You can see them on screen. Uh, so I can turn on Wi-Fi if I want to and have that show up there or I can turn it off, which it was apparently already. And it won't show up there. If we go back into there, gone like magic almost. Pretty fantastic. Now there's also some options here. We can also change um, the... Um, priority of notifications from certain apps. So as you can see here down at the bottom of each app area, so you actually have quite a bit of customization as to what notifications saw up in the action center in the first place. So if we dive into the mail app here, you'll see that I have priority of those notifications set to normal. So this kind of works in a hierarchy kind of way. So I can set some apps to be top priority. So any notifications that come from a top priority app will always show up at the top of the notification center. Whereas high priority, which is the next the step below that, will show up below top, but above normal notifications. And you've got normal, which are just simply normal notifications that will show up in order as the time they arrive in. So top priority uh, will ignore what time other app notifications arrive and will always be positioned at the top high will be below top priority but above normal and normal will just be normal notifications below top and high so that's pretty cool so if you have say the skype you use skype quite a lot and uh, you consider those notifications to be top priority you can make that a top priority app Cortana is currently set to show the always at the top of the action center. Do you want to replace it with the Skype preview? So only, apparently only one app can be top priority. The rest can be high or normal. Uh, so yes, top will again be at the very top. So I can say yes, Cortana is not important. Skype is much more important. So Cortana will, should now be um, demoted, I guess. Demoted, unpromoted, however you want to call it, down to high, yes, and then obviously every normal apps are normal. But yeah, multiple apps can be at high priority. So I can do the feedback up as high. Yes, yeah, so multiple can be high and normal, uh, but only one can be top. So that's all the detail, that's all the new features for the action sensor. I think they're all pretty cool. Um, if we jump into Edge, because Edge has received uh, loads of things, such as Edge uh, extension support. So extensions are here, as you can see, there's one up here. I've got my Amazon in um, Assistant installed, and this basically allows you to search Amazon and do some pretty cool stuff. So see how I can help. Uh, product comparison and all that good stuff. But I can install products, uh, sorry, extensions from the Edge store, the Edge store, the Windows store. So here they are in the Windows Store. I can see there's loads of extensions to download from. I've already got the Amazon Assistant installed. But let's install another one. Let's install the... Let's install Pin It. Why not? So I can now install Pin It from the Windows Store. That will simply download once I click on Free here. And something happened. Of course it did. But even though it's still downloading. So I'm going to pretend something didn't happen. And now it's there. I can hit launch. And Edge would be like, you have a new extension installed. Would you like to turn it on or keep it off? It'll also tell you what the uh, extension is allowed to do once you give it the permissions. Turn it on. Voila. It shows up there. I now have a number of options. I can pin it button apparently. Or I can show this button to the address bar. Which will then show up like that. Just much like in Google Chrome or any other modern browser. Then I've also got additional options that... Uh, <laughs> These are the options for the pin it button. Hide hovering pin it buttons. Yes. But yes, basic basic uh, extension support, which is fantastic. Uh, more developers should hopefully be putting their um, their apps, uh, the, their extensions in the Windows Store very soon. That took your time. Thanks for popping up there. Um, but basically, the uh, ba all the basic ones are there. You've got Adblock. So if you're an Adblock user, you can now use Adblock on Edge. And uh, like I said, more should be showing up uh, at some point soon. So let's take a look here and see what else is new. Web notifications. Uh, Microsoft Edge now supports web notifications. So if we go to, uh, what can we go to? Let's go to... Uh, let's go to the web Skype app because I know that actually allows web uh, notifications.com. Well, you shall see here when I log in eventually. Let's log in here. 
the website will ask me to show notifications. Now, in the past, Edge was very basic in the... It didn't even support um, notifications. Now it does. So I can press yes, and you'll see here if we go into... Nope, that's not what I wanted. If we go into settings here, um, go into advanced settings, you'll see I've now got an option to manage notifications, and you'll see that the Skype website shows up here. And basically what this allows is for Edge to give you a notification when you receive one on a web page. So like the what the web version of WhatsApp, for example, which many people use, you can now set Edge up to be like, uh, just to pick up notifications, just like any normal app would. So I can now quickly message um, via the Skype app here, and you should see an, a notification come through through Edge. So test, and with any luck. So there you go, as you can see, a notification just popped up here. I think two might, yes, because I sent two. They took a second to come in, but they are here now, and I can, once I tap on one here, it should launch the web page in which that notification came from, which is very, very nice indeed. Now, let's jump into the settings app, because the settings app includes a number of new customization options. Well, I say a number, a couple of new customization options, one of which being dark mode, as actually it's already been on the whole time. So dark mode, this is what the normal settings app looks like. Ugly, in my opinion. And this is what the dark mode looks like, which you've already seen. Uh, magical, awesome dark mode. Dark mode for the win. Also, the settings app itself has been kind of redesigned slightly, as you can see. Uh, the search bar is now up here in the center. And a couple of other UI tweaks. But yes, uh, dark mode is here, and it is and it is amazing. So we can see, so the Skype preview is one of the apps that support dark mode. We've also got Edge, we've got uh, Mail, even things like the People app, which also, which has also been updated as well. It's been given a hamburger menu here, which is actually kind of nice. Also dark mode, pretty much, oh, thanks Skype. Uh, pretty much every app, uh, well, the majority of apps here do support dark mode, including the Windows Central app, which uh, is pretty nice. Although I don't think the Windows Central app has a white mode. Regardless, it's dark and it's pretty cool. So um, yes, uh, this is, that was dark mode. Uh, some other customization options are the fact that um, the option to have your title bar color uh, set as your accent color is a separate option now. Before it was part of the show color on start, task bar, and action center option, but they've given it its own option so you can now have still dark mode on, uh, sorry, you can still have a, a different accent color from um, on your title bars than on your start menu, which is also pretty nice if we open up um, here, you can see there. Now my title bar is blue as well as blue here or I can actually go back here and turn that off and it will go back to black because I'm on dark mode and that's, they're the only real customization options the lock screen has also uh, received a number of new changes so if we jump into the lock screen area here you'll see that Cortana now shows up on the lock screen and I can initiate Cortana directly from the lock screen so I can say I'll just tap it here for example when she'll listen to me yeah. tell me a joke there are two types of people in the world those who need closure. <laughs> so funny. So yes, that's, uh, that's Cortana on the lock screen pretty much. And there's also music controls on the lock screen. So if we play a song, what's my pin there? It is, uh, let's go into Groove. Hopefully there's some music here. Yes, let's do a song. Uh, and lock the thing again. You'll see that I now have music controls always on the lock screen. No longer do I have to fumble and try to uh, activate the volume rocker here to get the music controls. They're now just here down here. I can pause, play, skip, all that good stuff. And then of course I can sign in and uh, uh, manipulate Ed, uh, gro um, sorry, Groove further. Now, finally, we've got Windows Ink. Now, this is mainly a tablet feature, but it does work on desktops as well. I've got things like Sticky Notes, Sketchpad, and Screen Sketch. Sketchpad being a simple, um, you know, Sketchpad I can draw, take notes, but again, not really useful for um, desktops. What is useful, however, are the Sticky Notes. Now, I know many people who are a big fan of the Sticky Notes on uh, Windows 7 and Windows 8, so and Vista, sorry. So these are much improved and then also much more intelligent as well. They now hook into Cortana so I can say, um, remember to um, do the dishes tomorrow and hopefully with any luck, Cortana will see it. So she can see the word tomorrow there and she's already thinking, hang on a minute, you're saying you want to do something in the future. 
I can help you with that. So if I tap on that, I can add that as a reminder and then she'll throw it in there as a sticky note. So you can see here, it, it does look like a sticky note. Remember to do the dishes tomorrow and she'll remind me at 12 a.m. tomorrow. Hit on remind and now she's sent that to her reminders, which is really, really cool. Now this does work with pen support as well, although unfortunately I don't have a pen on this device. I, I can use a pen, use my handwriting and Cortana is also smart enough if your handwriting is okay, at least unlike mine. Uh, she will recognize the fact that you said tomorrow or in a few days or whatever it is she can recognize and um, help you out with that, which is also very nice. Change the colors. So I can have that one as pink or purple. Don't ask me what colors things are. I'm colorblind. And uh, then, of course, we've got so you can t You can also turn the Cortana stuff off, which is the insights bit here. And you can also send application usage and other stuff. You can have multiple ones. So I know many people used to use multiple sticky notes. That hasn't gone away. You can still use them here. And uh, that's pretty nice. Also, the sticky notes function is its own separate thing as well. So I don't actually have to open them via the ink workspace. I can have them just sitting on the desktop, which is very nice indeed. We've also got screen sketch, which basically takes a screenshot of what's on screen and allows you to draw on it. So I can circle the logo here and say start button is the same as that thing over there or whatever it is I want to say and uh, that's also pretty good and then of course you've got quick access to your other pen specific apps again this isn't really useful for desktops and in fact you can turn it off on on desktops this won't this icon down it won't even show up so um, I just turned it on for demo purposes but this won't show up if you're using a desktop um, without any touch screen so um, keep that in mind. So there you have it guys that's a very quick look at the new Windows 10 anniversary update. This update rolls out for free for all Windows 10 users on August 2nd. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.